Welcome back to the brew house. If you saw last week's episode, then you saw that we went to the Brewyard Brewery. And there we met Kirk and Sherwin. Both of them together own and manage the Brewyard. And both of them are here today to tell us a little bit about their common style lagers that they specialize in. And I'd like to thank Brewhouse for inviting us over. Sherwin is behind the bar now, and he's gonna crack open a soul cow. So this is the beer that uh, started it all. This stems off the California common style, also known as the steam beer. And it's uh, actually one of the only beer styles that actually originated here in California. And, but this is our version. Um, it uh, has a nice caramel toasty malt note to it. And it just like the traditional uh, steam beer, it's hopped with only Northern Brewer. But ours is also dry hopped with Northern Brewer. So it definitely has more of a floral kind of earthy note in the aroma and the finish as well. And it hits really good today because it's hot. Yeah, it's about 90 outside right now. <laughs> so the only other popular um, California Commoner steam beer is that I can think of is the Anchor Steam, right? Yeah, it was popularized yeah. by the Anchor Steam and uh, then beer in San Francisco. For the episode that we did last week, I did a little bit of research and these came about because you didn't have refrigeration back then. Right, right, just a lack of uh, refrigeration. So what they actually did, they actually, after um, they boiled it in the kettle, they would um, move the um, beer to the rooftops. And that's where it kind of um, just evaporated and cooled down. Steam out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm not sure if that's that's how they came about the name of steam beer. Steam beer. But yeah, so then it would, because they were using lager yeast, but obviously with no refrigeration, they didn't, you know, uh, ferment it as cold as they could. So it was usually in the 60s, depending on ambient temperature. So was it kind of like an accident that it happened? Um, probably yeah. just out of, you know, what they were working with. Actually, um, if you kind of mull through the internet, you'll, you'll see other references to the, the term steam uh -huh. uh, that were, that possibly could have been used in other countries, like even in Germany. And, and once again, the, the term steam is a bit mysterious in terms of why do they call it that you know like why is this term being thrown around and so it's almost mythological <laughs> in terms of and the actual like or origin of it yeah so. yeah i mean it is uh it's lager yeast mm -hmm. that we do ferment that's slightly different so that's why we, we kind of came with the term common style lagers because it is a derivative of the actual steam beer process, mm -hmm. but we actually incorporated that process to a full line of beers. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one type of beer, because exactly, like, it's not just like a California anymore. common. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anymore. Yeah, now, now, yeah, since now. you guys exactly, because a California common just refers to like one type of beer, which is yeah, one type of lager, amber and hybrid, style. amber hybrid. Okay, exactly. And then some of the other stuff we have here is basically different types of lagers that you guys just use the same process on. Right, right. Well, one of them we brought is a, uh, a pale version of it. And then another one is actually uh, uh, our other, especially Sherwin's other passion are, is a, Bel a Belgian style that oh, we brought in. Excellent. Uh, so. Yeah, so we also have, uh, we also mess with Belgian ales as well, mm -hmm. along with our uh, common lagers. So the Belgian isn't, isn't what you guys would call your common style. Then. No. No. Okay. So no, no, no. It is a true Belgian. Belgian. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. So that's not lager based. It's a true ale. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And this is excellent. It's This is still like, it's one of the smoothest, like, drinkable beers I've had in, like, the local area. I mean, a, a lot of people here in Southern California are making some really, really good stuff. Oh, yeah. But man, like, this, these are so, like, smooth. Like, I could go to the beach and then, like, <laughs> take a six pack of these and just be there all day. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's because, I mean, Sherwin and I, since we've born and raised here, you know, like it's just one of those things where we're just so acclimated to this style of climate that maybe it's just because we just crave something a little bit more like easygoing, you know, like a little more drinkable. Could you pour sense. me a little bit more of that? Yeah, sure. Well, I think you guys hit it on the head here with like what you were trying to achieve with this guy right here. Because it's like, it's not, it doesn't have like an overpowering smell. So you don't really know what it's going to be like when it hits your tongue. And then it's like little pops of like, what is it, caramel? Uh, caramel, toast, malt, yeah. Yeah, toasty, malty. But it's not, 
it's definitely not what you expect. Like you expect it to kind of taste because it's a little darker, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but just from aroma alone, it's a big surprise when it hits your tongue and how good it is. And just with the Northern Brewer hops, it, it has more of a kind of woody, earthy kind of character rather than the, you know, the citrus, piney uh -huh. kind of hop character with, you know, most IPAs. Yeah, and I definitely say actually our, our SoCal, uh, specifically in terms of the California common style. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sherwin actually punched up that Northern Brewer a little bit more. It's a little bit, uh, you know, poppier than your traditional California common category. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually one that fit better um, in, a, in the California common category was our Jewel City common that we're actually gonna brew again because we just found out that it took silver in the San Diego uh, International Beer Competition. Oh, nice. When so, did that happen? Uh, this week. Yeah, yeah we got oh. the results two days ago. Oh, yeah, nice. I know. It's our it's our very first medal. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, uh, so, you know, it's definitely, we're very proud of the fact that it was our common that, you know, uh, took a medal. So this is our sunny morning. This is our pale common lager. And just like our other beers, it's lager based, but we do ferment it slightly warmer. So you get a nice balance between ale flavors, uh, but it still has a lot of uh, lager characteristics to it. You can already see how much lighter this one is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what should we be expecting from this one? This one is very clean and crisp, yeah. but it does have a nice kind of biscuit cracker-like um, malt character to it. Well, then and I'll cheers to silver metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, and this one is hopped with uh, German uh, saffir. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice German hop, um, kind of floral, has a, has a spice. I can taste spicy, the spicy. Yeah, it's, spicy character to it. It's, it's very balanced. It's got a crisp kind of like filling to it. Right, right, and so especially for, you know, hot weather as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hence the name, it's uh, Easy as Sunday morning. <laughs> I should have animal back there. <laughs> yeah, this is excellent as well. Yeah, this is one of uh, you know our uh, our popular beers in the tap room. It's very approachable, and even for you know someone that is not sure of what beer to try, you know, we'll have them try this first, and you know if they're into it, it kind of opens their palate to oh, you know, let me try another common style mm -hmm. lager. Just the color alone is, I think, welcome to someone that's. Like usually a darker beer, a darker beer will scare like a newer. They tend to sort yeah. of draw oh, it yeah. off. Yeah, those basically color can be intimidating in the beer world, you know. So I mean, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, this one is sort of just more what we all grew up with in this area, you know, like mm -hmm. just in this region, the, just the lighter lager, you know, golden uh, yeah. lager, American lager styles. And so, you know, when they see something like this, they're a little less, uh, they're a little more you know, uh, willing to give it a try, even if it does have a weird name, like, you know, Pale Common Lager, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I really like it because it definitely has a lot more flavor than, you know, than your, yeah. your, your tried and true. Stuff. I was going to say something like the color is a lot like maybe, uh, like a common people were used to, it's like a Dust of Peace or a, um, yeah. or even like a Budweiser, except it, yeah. this has like a ton of flavor in it. It yeah. has a lot of body. It's de It has yeah. a deceptively, a lot of body in it when you look at it you don't expect it right but then there's you know with that body there is still kind of a, a i'd say a familiar uh you know crisp finish at the end very of much though. so you know so it's like and is there a little bit of like citrus in it or something like that um it's probably actually from the sapphire hops Saffir? yeah it gives it kind of that note yeah i guess you could say in terms of this you know just like a light beer you know, it it does like it does taste really great, but it is less filling. If you <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't start laughing, I wouldn't have gotten. It. <laughs> In addition to our common style lagers, we also do Belgian ales. So this one is our Belgian single. And this is a true ale, and this one is our Belgian single, ready to mingle, with a calamansi fruit, which is a Filipino citrus. My favorite part is that when we filmed the episode at the brewery, they gave me a little bit of it, and it was like the calamuxi was very like faint, and 
Perky's like, it's really not supposed to be like that. So they threw a whole bunch more in. <laughs> and then the next week I had it again. And now it tastes the way it does now. Yeah. Yeah. We actually Cheers. used uh, fresh calamansi. Like our friends, Mike and Dre, they kind of scoured their aunts and uncles, you know, backyards. Everyone has a calamansi tree over there. And so mm -hmm. they, you know, just picked up what, like maybe 20, 30 pounds of it. And then we kind of just chopped it up and tossed it in. Threw it in the fermenter. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, calamansi fruit is kind of a cross between a lime and an orange. So you kind of get those nice citrus notes in this, as well as the, the yeasty um, character from the Belgian yeast. If I didn't know it was calamansi, I probably would just say it was, assume it was normal orange. Then once you know it's not orange, you start to taste the other things. A little suit. lime to it. You know? Yeah, because you usually right. think those flavors are coming from somewhere else, but then you know it's all from the same thing. Yeah. Right, yeah, so it's a very refreshing. Um, this yeah. one is very aromatic as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Last time we did our Radio Domingo, it was a version with uh, basil leaves. Mm -hmm. And that was a nice one. So we were kind of seasonal on uh, on this beer. So hopefully next time we'll try try another fruit or another ingredient. But this one came out really nice. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I have a feeling that if we switch it up, there may be a slight riot. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, that's, that's was this here. one where you got to try the calamatsi in the Randall? Or was it just a, a side experiment different from that? Well, well, yeah, I mean, we actually used the calamansi and the randall just to kind of yeah. get a kind of a, a quick, you know, kind of taste of what it would be like, mm -hmm. you know, in the beer. And it definitely, uh, because of the citrus fruit, does have a tartness to it, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. It kind of dries out in the palate really quickly and just kind of gets ready for, for your next sip. <laughs> yeah, and to mingle. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Kirk and Sherwin again for coming and talking about their beer. And mostly I'm glad they came because even though I was there last week, I still didn't have like a complete understanding of what their common style lockers were and how they came about. Now I do. And it makes me like them even more because I already love them, but now I know what makes them work. And as always, everyone that's watching, you all live near a craft brewer. And go and find them, go talk to them. Everyone is very cool and try everything. And if you're in the Southern California area, especially Glendale, Pasadena, Burbank, please go to the brew yard. You know these guys. Go and have a beer, and you will not regret it. Cheers. 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 I got a little left. Cool. Thanks again to Brewhouse, uh, Will, Pat, and Kevin. Thank, thanks them for uh, inviting us over here and stop by. And thank you for bringing me a bunch of beer. <laughs> of course.